The mutants are here with us. You might have seen them, not even once. Maybe without realizing that you are looking at a mutation. Rose, the resident of a coastal northern California town, started suspecting that she is looking at something extraordinary when her backyard plant that was supposed to grow into a gracious flowering spike started to turn into a spectacular, ten feet high, five feet wide creature. We're here in very cloudy, foggy, gray Pacifica. We were trying to get sun, but we're not getting it. The sun is ever here? Yes, it's here. Sometimes. It was here yesterday. I was here yesterday. Yesterday I was not here. Okay, I'm doing this because I have a small YouTube channel about gardening. It's called Authentic Gardening. And I like to cover gardeners who are doing it in a very specific, authentic way, authentic to them. And Rose is the gardener of today. <laughs> She's my friend. And she sent me the picture of this... Echium. Echium. I, I want to say monster, but then I got a little shy about that word. So, Rose. Yes. Tell us, how did this thing happen to get here? Okay, so a couple of years ago, a friend of mine actually lived next door. He dug up a plant. I think I know where he got it from. So he gave me a couple, and I planted, I think, one in the front yard and then this one. And really, I just put it in the ground and maybe watered it a few times. I've watered it a little bit, and this is what it became. So when did you start noticing that there's something unusual going on about this plant? This, this year, um, wow, maybe in the last six months ago. Uh-huh. Yeah, because... It started coming up, you know, like the bottom here, it started fanning out. And uh -huh. then when it really became noticeable was before it flowered, it, it, it was kind of rounded on itself and it looked like this creature. And it, it, was, it didn't feel scary, it just looked like a creature because it was wrapped around itself and it had like this middle chunk. And it had like, it looked like a face almost. It's funny that you say this because when we posted a picture of this plant on Reddit, we got like over 800 upvotes and people were actually uh, making the reference. The Little Shop of Horrors. The Little Shop of uh, Horrors. What kind of a weird plant is that, Seymour? Little Shop of Horrors. There you have it. Calling it an Audrey. And... We just want to assure you that this is not Audrey and this is not a shop of horrors. Yeah. It's actually a very benevolent plant. It doesn't drink blood, doesn't eat flesh, and doesn't wander around when everybody's asleep. It's just sitting there, attracting bees, looking pretty <laughs> and amazing. Mm -hmm. right. It doesn't come into my room at night. <laughs> it hasn't shown up in my dreams yet. Yeah. How does it feel living next to it, having it in your backyard? It's great. I love it. And it's been fun to share it with friends and have people come over and go, wow, and then <laughs> take a picture of it. And I sent it to, I sent a picture to Liana. She's like, I'm coming over tomorrow. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you're not. I have to work. You can come. But she was so enthusiastic. She, and she hasn't come to visit me in four years. <laughs> So it took, and I even said, it's going to take, you're coming to see my plant, not me, you know. And then I just, her enthusiasm was so strong that I was like, yeah, come. So she came. This is what it became, and it's only a couple of years old. And then this spring, it just started taking this amazing shape. And it didn't look like this. It looked more like this hooded kind of 
it didn't feel like mean or scary. It just felt it felt benevolent, but it just felt like a, a creature. And I call it the, the beastess now, beastess. And you can't touch it because it's very, it has all these prickles, it, it hurts. So you need gloves to touch that. This is like a, like an animal. It looks like a snake to me. Yeah. Yeah, flora and fauna. And the birds are hanging out here, I've noticed, too. The birds have been taking up residence in it lately. Hmm. It does have a kind of a nice feel. It is very, um, it is like a, where flora and fauna come together, you know? Because it, it looks like skin. It looks like pig skin, you know, like this is hair. It's a friendly business. Yeah, it's very friendly. It's very sweet. She reminded me of Hawaii a lot. Just because she has like canyons in her and just the way she's growing. Just And I've spent a lot of time in Hawaii and hiking, hiking up and the way the valleys are there and so and how green it is how lush it is it's a very lush plant so she reminds me and, of hawaii. and, and the power of the right. power and the aliveness of right. uh, yeah. hawaii you know right. the explosion of the life force yeah yeah and that's very that. vibrant and, and it is very tropical i mean she actually this plant originated this particular breed what do you call it, specimen, species, comes from one island in the Canary Islands. That's where she comes from. Yeah, you know, that's a lot of what the story behind this plant is like the things of my house. A lot of this stuff was found. So the plant was like dug up in the neighborhood and my neighbor gave it to me, right? And I planted it and this is what it became. I guess I watered it. But like that, this thing over there next to the plant was on the street being given away. So I put it in the yard. And a lot of the stuff was just given away. Well, my neighbor said, oh, you can have it. And I'm hauling that in here, you know. So uh, would you say you're an avid gardener? No. I admire gardening and no, I haven't like put in like tons of money to make the soil better and like I like to go away a lot. I do try to keep what is here going, you know. I have a lot of appreciation for flowers and plants. Yeah. I do. Yeah. yeah, and I like to yeah. Yeah. I have orchids in the house and I'm curious to know what care you put into this plant. Pretty much nothing. I stuck the plant in the ground and maybe I've watered it a few times, you know. And I think in the beginning I watered it. I really haven't done anything with it. We are actually like less than a block from the ocean front here, and the so the soil here is sand, right? It's just like almost pure sand, really poor. Yeah. Allison comes and uh, succulents, and that's about it. And of course weeds, right? Yeah, lots of. So, weeds. but this thing seems like did really well. Did you do any pruning? No. And Nothing. you told me that you had one stalk that was right. like, almost like real flower. So, yeah, a stalk was coming out, a separate stalk, a straight stalk, and it was flowering. And then we had a storm and it broke off. And I was bummed because it was flowering. And it, and I, and it was before this, before the top, was flowering, the stalk was flowering, and I was really bummed that it broke off because it was like I was watching it grow, and, and then the whole top exploded, and, and you can see the bees. The bees come. The yeah. bees are coming. Yeah, and there is one branch that is coming in the back, mm -hmm. which looks normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a normal plant to hold. Right. Okay, let's go and get actually to what kind of plant is that. 
I contacted the Botanical so San Francisco Botanical so Society, wow. and I sent them a picture and asked them if they wanted to come and see the plant, and they told me what it was. They told me it was a fasciated Echium kininana. Yeah, that's a oh. mouthful. They told me it was a naturally mutating plant. So fasciated means that something has got wrong with the informational matrix of the plant that tells the plant... It could be plant, environment, it could be soil, it could be all kinds of factors. Or, disease, right. Yeah. So it's like it's a genetic mutation. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much it's an alien. Yeah, it's a mutation. <laughs> it's a mutation. It's a weirdo. It's a weirdo. Yeah, but it's a good weirdo. weirdo. I live near the airport. Right. Well, not the airport, but in the sky, in the... Uh, the route. Airways. The airways. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it maybe, maybe mutated because of all the planes the, flying over and the the chemtrails. The chemtrails and the vibration and the fog and it's possible. So fasci fasciated means that something is going goes wrong in the informational matrix and in the brain of the plant and instead of telling the cells to grow upwards it starts growing sideways and it creates this fan. It looks like a fan. Like a fan. Yeah. And then it went up from the fan. So you see at the base here, there's, it's like a fan, but nothing's happening. And then on top of that, it started to do its, it had the leaves. It's like folds. Yeah. Uh, folds on top. Um, so we were going to talk about seeds and cuttings because people were actually asking us about it. Did you ever get seeds or cuttings from an ecum? No. No, me neither. So we'll have to research that and if you actually have any knowledge of that, please leave us a comment below yeah, and be uh, yeah, point us in the direction where we can uh, educate ourselves how to make seeds, uh, how, to, how to collect seeds and how to make cuttings from this plant. And the other question for me is like, if you take a cutting, if I take a cutting, I can take a cutting from any kind of tissue or the tissue that's already fasciated, what? It's All like, right. this is like lots of unknowns. But I do know this, I did look, someone wanted me to send them seeds and I was like, I don't want to touch the plant yet. That's for sure. Well, they're not ready yet. She's flowering, there's bees on her. So yeah, I, and I did look up, you know, when, to get seeds and it's like after it flowers then you let them dry you let the pods dry and then you can take them off so right. it's going to be a while i think right we are in uh, the beginning of june now today is what's june the sec june the third so and it's flowering uh, there are other ecums that i know on the coast they're done no flowers anymore they're just green stalks so mm -hmm. This is kind of late for an ecum, but oh, who knows, it's wow. an unusual plant. And uh, also we uh, learned that um, the uh, mutation might not hold in right. the next generation in the seeds. Right. So we're going to collect seeds anyhow, Yeah. try to collect it, and we're going to look into the cuttings things.